which is about inks and uh, papyrus. So our first speaker is Maria Cristina Gamberini from University of Modena. And she is going to talk about some analysis of ancient black pigments from Roman archaeological sites. Please. Hi, everybody. Thank you for being here. Also, even if the afternoon, the lunch after the lunch time. Uh, so we will talk about. Uh, we spend just a few minutes in talking about spectroscopy, um, sp structure, and spectroscopy analysis of Asian black pigments from archaeological sites. Sites coming from uh, Italy. Uh, what is our analytical procedure? Uh, well, actually, our analytical procedure is uh, an, um, a complex one. Uh, we start with the um, optical microscope for uh, to distinguish homogeneity and heterogeneity of the powder. We will talk about powder. Um, and then we use ultraviolet light to determine the presence of binder, organic and mineral colorants, if present. And then in our lab, we have uh, we use a scan elect electron microscope for uh, to understand morphology of the powder and also x-ray x -ray diffraction uh, if to identify quantify the powder after and we have spectroscopies chemists so vibrational spectroscopies FTIR and Raman spectroscopy as you know for uh, uh, possible to, to define the presence of clay organic binders and to define I identify or other materials and organic compounds uh, with such technique also uh, what we use Rama, why we use uh, also micro Raman spectroscopy is because it is a non invasively and non destructive technique, and also we can use the same sample and study with other uh, non invasively technique. And it's also possible to identify uh, with this technique mineral and organic components uh, inside mat uh, complex matrix, and also contaminants of, of processing and, and environment contaminants too. So we will you use uh, for a screening uh, technique for a study a lot of sample you will understand how many sample we usually manage so this is just an example of uh, some images of one sample of one of the thousand samples and here the abundance of element just to have an idea for those of them are not chemists but you all of them you know very well this and this is just two example uh, of Raman and FTI spectra uh, yes uh, we study uh, uh, powder yes in organics quite simple uh, what we also we study in other samples uh, quite difficult so we study the shoulder and the shoulder and the shoulder and we assign each band uh, and each band to a ligand, a vibrational spectroscopy. So usually we make also the segment of all the band. Yes, we do also X-ray X-ray diffraction, uh, uh, so powder diffraction. But in this case, uh, uh, we had a lot of uh, um, um, the pattern was not so good. So we had to, to come in a high resolution um, beam line to have uh, all the patterns uh, selected and with uh, and a good result. So. What was our project to come here? Well, actually, uh, Philippe Alter and Martinetto has told me, why don't you, you, you come and analyze this and to do analysis of all your sample uh, to have good result. And Catherine Dijon helped us a lot in the beamline ID 22. Without our help, we couldn't manage uh, for a long time, one week, day and night, and all this measurement. You will see how many samples she did for us. Thank you, Catherine. And also, um, Pierre Olivier, now uh, he works a lot and is, is still working on, on the, the results and is still working to have uh, uh, the result that you will see just part of them. Uh, mm. So, where the power came from? It came from uh, ancient orders that the um, archaeologists told us they were orders for Asian cosmetic, uh, Asian cosmetic. Uh, holder and they were busy. Uh, they told us because my friends are ecologists, also no chemist. Also, uh, so PCD uh, cos used for cosmetic. Atramentum uh, w was was used for inks. Unguentar and balsamario for cosmetic usage. So they all the powders usually at first uh, are analyzed with uh, our vibrational spectroscopy. So FTIR and micro Raman also says technique too uh, for the most difficult sample. Then we came, I came here uh, in uh, um, beamline ID 22 with uh, 
the sample. Yes, but not all of them because all of them are really lots. Yes, there were black powders, grey powder, pink powder and white powder. I brought here just, just the, the black powder. Uh, well, actually there were 133 black powders and uh, found inside the ocean orders. The ocean orders that we expected were 1,300. And from the first microanalysis, uh, carbon black was present and uh, vegetable and bone, ca uh, bone, uh, and bone black we found could due to some bands uh, uh, um, in some spectra and in some order, not all of them. So I came here with uh, more or less 50 samples uh, coming from a different place in Italy, so coming from Ecolano and Pompeii and also from Sicily. So I went in marvelous place, I was very lucky. Um, <laughs> I went in Mozia Island, a marvelous mm, island near Trapani, uh, mm, Seal Museum and also Salina since Palermo. Uh, here is, is the setup of ID22 uh, with high resolution, high energy of resolution for X ray diffraction. So the detector and the sample put inside the capillary. The experiment in ID22, so 50 samples, uh, uh, we, we, we have uh, tried to put, yes, try to put, I say try because uh, inside the little capillary, usually we broken also the capillary sometimes and the power was not uh, too much. So we have to be, we had to be quick, but also to, 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 to fill all the capillary. And the sample was put on a maniac stand and due to, and due to uh, robotic harm, it's possible to study all these samples in ID22. And ID22, with the help of uh, Catherine, um, we could do analysis all night and day, during the morning and during the night also. Thank you again. Uh, so here is just an example of our sample. Um, high resolution X-ray diffraction, you will see at first the first uh, uh, pattern uh, at low at low um, energy. We could Pierre uh, Oliver could study um, the amorphous part of carbon black. And here, just the optical image of the sample um, uh, put inside the capillary. Here is an example uh, of a sample coming from a colon of the patterns. Uh, how it could mm, so good just only here because in our instrument with the resolution in Unimore we couldn't have these results. So all he all these results were and are still uh, um, still uh, still elaborate with Ritfeld refinement to have uh, uh, to have a good a good a good answer. So here is just. Um, to uh, understand uh, that uh, the crystal part uh, the of, uh, of, more of uh, the black powder fit exactly. And uh, the residue from the crystal part uh, was the amorphous part of carbon black. At, at point 1.2, point point um, we observed the distant carbon to carbon, and at, at, the, at point 2.4, point we observed the distance they took carbon to the neighbor to the other one. So uh, a good results are coming, but uh, you know you've seen that the samples are really uh, very ma a lot of sample. So this is just a table, uh, a table of some of the results. So in the first column you will see the sample with the inventory number, and the inventory number is the inventory number of the oldest. You can see some picture of the old inside on the on the other part near to the column. Uh, and then in the second column is the crystalline phase, the quantification of the crystalline phase. Well, and and then the XRF results of the little percentage of the oxidant present. And yes, we could, uh, uh, you can focus your attention on the green. We could, we could have a good result and I found the um, black carbon in some samples. Yes, usually these black carbon were vegetable. We are not so lucky here to, to find the bone, the bone black. 
So what is our challenge? Our challenge, yes, is to study thousands and thousands of samples. Yes, we have more or less 2,000 samples, all in my lab. Um, uh, so you, you can't find any more in uh, the old, the old, if you want to go there. Um, and yes, but we want to have a connection, a more, uh, more knowledge between the old, the ancient oldest, and what found inside. So to have a connection and what the ancient oldest made of. In conclusion, uh, we can say that um, the, ancient, uh, the ancient powder found inside the ancient oldest, so atramentum, guentarium, balsamarium, and can be studied with uh, a multi analytical approach techniques, not just one. Well, actually, uh, we are talking about just powder, and so we are talking about laser. You know that if a matrix organic was present, I couldn't use this, uh, but the professors, the Raman sars, but I had to use GC mass and the technique also. So Raman spectroscopy can be useful for screening thousands of samples to have identification, not quantification, only with the XIR, um, uh, X-ray uh, powder diffraction and only here in Grenoble AD22, uh, uh, it was possible identification and composition of this powder. Yes, there are no destructive samples, so we can use for other analysis if we need, and also we have major knowledge between the holders and the containers. I have to acknowledge again all the persons that uh, are working, are still working in the project. Other names are not written here because uh, uh, there were other two persons helping us. Uh, so I have to, to thank again uh, Martinette and Philippe Balta, they asked me to come here, and uh, Catherine, that she worked a lot, and Pierre Olivier uh, for the uh, X, uh, X, uh, X, uh, um, uh, pattern diffraction. So uh, thank you a lot for your attention and do you want to come with me in this marvelous place? Why not? <laughs> okay. Thank you very much. Do we have any questions? Thank you for a nice talk. Uh, just a question. Um, measuring um, uh, inks in the, on the uh, Herculean papyri, in the? on the top, on the written Herculean papyri, not in um, inkwell as you do, uh, in er ink coming from Herculaneum, okay? Uh -huh. But Herculaneum papyri, yeah. papyrus, papyri. Papyri, yes, I, have, I haven't done papyri, okay. I do that. Okay. So. <laughs> Me no. <laughs> Yeah, but what we found at the SRF, but also in the library itself with the portable I XRF, uh, practically systematically, Olivier can confirm, uh, we found metal okay. in, uh, in uh, ink. So it's not pure carbon based, uh, atramentum, etc. Okay. Uh, so. Ah, well, oh, actually, <laughs> uh, with Raman, is uh, yes, and also other technique, it could it is possible to find metal. Well, uh, so a, a we large amount we found. No. Like, no, we didn't. Well, actually, uh, for example, in PCD there was present the carbonate, uh, but uh, lead carbonate uh, it rotates, so it becomes a basic lead carbonate, if you think about this, but other kind, yes, well, hematite was uh, uh, oxi oxi uh, lead uh, oxid uh, oxid of, uh, uh, um, hmm? I don't know the name in English, uh, and, and then the west, but metal, no, we no. didn't find. That's if, you, if you go back to your table, there is something which is really interesting. Yep. As a continuation oh, of I what, have to come back what to Victor it. showed this or explained okay. this morning, is that it's uh, the one which is uh, <coughs> 11432. So the one which is in the second third of your table. A very a phase, very minor, you say phosphoedifan. And yeah. this is extremely interesting because it is a bit similar to what uh, Victor mentioned this morning, the yeah. this lead calcium phosphate. And this result for us is very interesting because when we found lead and phosphorus and as lead phosphates, not on the, or may possibly on the Herculanum papyrus, but on Egyptian papyrus, immediately the first question is, is it something which forms in situ? Because mm -hmm. of the 
phosphorus which will come from the env environment. The fact that you find it in the ink, independently of the papyrus, is a very good clue that phosphates are already in the ink and they are not coming from the environment. So I think there is really something to to explore more on this kind of, of okay. phases here. The sample is coming from Pompeii. Uh, Pompeii. 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 Yeah. Related to that <coughs> point uh, Vito mentioned, uh, made, uh, just from curiosity, would you see in Raman spectroscopy Galena, the lead sulfide? Uh, well, uh, sulf uh, sulfur of um, um, mercury. Uh, lead, yeah. No, no, not um, like a GS. I didn't do anything. Mercury? No, P P yes. PB. PBS. And also PB, carbonate PB, Carina. but carbonated. Carbonated, the uh, basic carbonated, so PB. The, the yeah. question was if you have detected lead sulfide. Ah, no, Galena. lead sulfide, no. no. 